Hey there, this is Mr. Polarski. Welcome to another Algebra 1 lesson, Solving Multi-Step Equations Part 2. The objectives today are, I will be able to solve multi-step equations containing fractions, and I will be able to solve multi-step equations containing decimal numbers. I work out of the Algebra 1 textbook, Prentice Hall, copyright 2009. This is Lesson 3-2. Example 14, solving an equation that contains fractions. Uh, there are two parts to 4T. This is part A. Notice I have the same equation. I'm going to show you two different ways how to solve this equation. First, I'm going to show you how to solve this equation by adding these fractions by finding a common denominator. To add or subtract fractions, you need to have a common denominator. And the con common denominator of 2 and 5 would be 10. So our denominators will be 10 in this case. Since I multiply 2 by 5 to get 10, 3x times 5 gives 15x. And since I multiply 5 by 2 to get 10, I multiply 1x by 2 to get 2x. At this point, I'll bring down my equal 17. On the left-hand side, since I have the common denominator of 10, I can add the two numerators. 15x plus 2x is 17x being equal to... 17. At this point, I'll need to get rid of this fraction by multiplying by the fraction's reciprocal, which would be 10 over 17. Multiply this side by 10 over 17. The 10s on the left divide out become 1. The 17s on the left divide out and they become 1. And x is equal to on this side, we simplify this multiplication. The 17s can divide out and become 1, giving 1 times 10 to give 10, and 1 times 1 to give 1. So 10 over 1, or just x is equal to 10. Now that's the first way to solve that equation. This is the second method. And in this case, we're going to eliminate the fractions by multiplying both sides by the common denominator of 10. So we'll multiply the left by 10 and the right by 10. On the left-hand side, when we distribute this 10, we go 10 times 3 halves. Well, 10 times 3 halves, 10 times 3 is 30, divided by 2 is 15, so that gives us 15x. And we'll be adding that to uh, 10 times 1 is 10, divided by 5 is 2, so that gives us 2x. And on the right-hand side, we multiply 17 times 10 to get 170. So on this side, it's a matter of being able to multiply 10 by a fraction. On the left, we have like terms. 15x plus 2x is 17x, being equal to 170. Next, we divide each side by 17. The reason we divide by 17 is because it's the 17 times x. The opposite of multiplication is division. On the left-hand side, the 17s divide out. 17x divided by 17 leaves us with 1x, being equal to 170 divided by 7. When we simplify this arithmetic, that gives us 10. So we have two methods. And it's up to you how you want to solve it. Either way, you can do it. Uh, you can enter this into a calculator, too. That would be a third method, using a calculator. Moving on to example 4T, part B. We're going to take a look at both methods. First, we're going to work with the fraction and the equation as is. And this will be method 1. With method 1, we need to read the equation. 5 times p divided by 6 is minus 15 is equal to negative 10. To start this, we're, since this term has the variable with it and, it and it involves multiplication and division, we're going to eliminate this constant term, minus 15, by using the opposite, which would be a plus 15. 
the addition property of equality says we must do it to both sides. Minus 15 plus 15 becomes zeros because they're opposites, leaving us with 5p over 6 is equal to, when we simplify negative 10 plus 15, that gives us a positive 5. Next, we need to get rid of this fraction, 5 over 6. We multiply by the fraction's reciprocal. The fraction is 5 over 6, so it's going to be 6 over 5. 6 and 6 divide out and become 1. 5 and 5 divide out and become 1, leaving us 1p on the left-hand side. Now I multiply the right-hand side by 6 over 5. That's the multiplication property of equality. And we can see the 5s divide out, giving us 1. And 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1, so we have 6 over 1. Or 1p is equal to 6. That's how I put 1 times p there. 1 times p is equal to 6. So that's method 1. Working with the fraction as is, uh, another, the other method would be to eliminate the fraction by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. So that would be multiplying by 6. So we're multiplying both sides by 6 here. When we distribute this 6 to here, 6 times 5 is 30, divided by 6 is 5, so that leaves us with 5p. 6 times minus 15. Notice I put the minus sign down already. 6 times 15 is 90, so that gives us 5p minus 90. On the other side, negative 10 times 6 gives us negative 60. I next solve the equation by adding 90 to both sides. Minus 90 and plus 90 are opposites. They become 0, giving us 5p. And on the left-hand side, negative 60 plus 90 is 30. Then we divide each side by 5. And p is equal to 6. So we see you get the same result, but it's a different method. The first method is just working with the equation as is. You can see it's a little bit shorter. The second method is eliminating the fraction. Example 5t, we're going to focus on working with decimals. I'm going to show you two methods here in example 5t for part A. First is just working with the equation as is. The first method I'm going to show, method 1, is going to be working with the equation as is, working with the numbers as decimals. This is a basic two-step equation. We have addition and multiplication, so we'll need to subtract, in this case, 18, 65 from both sides. These are opposites. They become 0, leaving on the left-hand side of the equal sign, 0.6a. And when we subtract on the left-hand side, 5 take away 5 is 0. 8 take away 6 is 2, and 22 take away 18 is 4, so that gives us 4.2. The next step is to divide each side by 0 0.6. The 0.6a divided by 0 0.6 leaves us with 1 times a, or 1a, on the left-hand side, and 4.2 divided by 0 0.6 is 7. So that's the first way to solve that problem. That would be with working with the decimals as is. The second method is to eliminate the decimals by multiplying by a power of 10. In this case, since they're the most decimal places there are two, that would be the hundreds place, we'd want to multiply both sides of the equation by 100. So that would be multiply the left-hand side by 100 and multiply the right-hand side by 100. When we distribute the 100, 100 times 0.6a is 60a. 100 times 18.65 is 1,865. 
and 100 times 22.85 is 2,285. The next step would be to subtract 1,865 from both sides. On the left-hand side, that would leave us 60 times A being equal to subtracting over here. 5, time, five take away 5 is 0. 8 take away 6 is 2. And 12 take away 8 is 4, 420. Dividing each side of that by 60 also gives you the result of A or 1A being equal to seven. Moving on to example 5T part B. The last example here, we're going to look at it in terms of the two methods we've been talking about. The first method, working with the fraction as is. That's what we've been working with as method, method one or as the problem as is. So in this particular problem, we have 4 times x divided by 5 plus 0.6 is equal to 2.4. So we'll start by subtracting 0.6 from both sides. Since it's a basic two-step equation, Two point four take away 0 0.6 is 0 1.8. And then we need to multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of 4 over 5, which is 5 over 4. The 5 and the 5 and the 4 and the 4 all cross cancel or leave us 1s all over the place. They divide out and become 1. So on the left-hand side, we're left with 1x. On the right-hand side, we need to multiply by 5 over 4. Five times 1.8 is 9, and 9 divided by 4 is 2.25. Method 2. I'm going to try to eliminate the fraction and see if by chance it's going to eliminate the decimals. The denominator here is 5, so I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 5. When I distribute the 5 on the left-hand side of the equation, 4x over 5 times 5, the 5s will divide out and leave us with the 4x. When I multiply 5 times 6 tenths, or 0.6, that gives us 3. And on the right-hand side, when I go 2.4 times 5, that gives us 12. Now it's a simple two-step equation. Let me subtract 3 from both sides. And that leaves us with the equivalent equation, 4x is equal to 9. And remember the 3 and the minus 3 are opposites, they become 0. Next we'll divide each side by 4. That's using the distrib uh, division property of equality. On the left-hand side, the 4s divide out, leaving us with 1x. And that's 9 over 4. We can write that as the fraction 9 over 4. Or you can change that to 2.25 or 2 and 1 quarter. Or 2.22 or 2.25. This has been Mr. Polarski. Another algebra lesson. I vote thanks for watching. Bye-bye.